In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, so that we may prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none. And whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what it is that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation. And all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate in the church what is often referred to as Gaudete Sunday, which is the Latin word for let us rejoice. And so on Gaudete Sunday, we wear rose-colored vestments, not pink, but rose, and we write, we write, we light the rose-colored candle. And it's funny, coming in, several people always said, oh, it's pink day. No, it's pink out there, it's rose in here. Actually, it's more Pepto-Bismol um, colored than anything else. And why Mother Church thinks this is more joyous than than uh, purple, that's just an age-old tradition. Well, today on this Gaudete Sunday, we, we know that 
Oftentimes in our lives, we hear about only children getting a bad rap. I can say that because I am one. Only children are thought to be more spoiled, seek attention, and they cannot share. Well, I know what some of you are thinking, and shame on you. I can share the other two I'm working on. But only children are not the only ones. We all learn at a young age that it is hard to share. And we don't always get what we want in life. And those are very hard lessons to learn. I was Christmas shopping at Penn Square the day after Thanksgiving, which I'll never do again. And um, I ran into a friend of mine whose child was waiting in line to see Santa Claus. And so I stopped there and visited with him while this happened. And when the little boy got up there, he pulled out this big, long list, and he started reading all the things that he wanted for Christmas. And it was going on and on and on and on. And finally, I said to my friend, I said, I think we're, we've blown past two or $3,000 for sure. Well, when the little boy got back, my friend said, now, now don't be disappointed because Santa might not be able to bring all those things which you listed on the list. To which his son said, well, he better because last year he was pretty darn cheap. And my brother and sister got more, and I remember exactly who got what. Well, we all learn at a young age that life is often not fair. But one of the lessons that we try to teach, certainly in school, and parents try to teach that, is that it is the right thing to share. And that is very important. And here we have John the Baptist telling people who are wanting to be baptized that if you're going to get baptized, there's a responsibility. If you have two cloaks, share with those who have none. If you have food, do likewise. Christmas times oftentimes brings out the best in people and, and sometimes the worst. I must admit, Black Friday, when I was Christmas shopping, I started out in a great mood. But as the day progressed and the crowds got worse, I found my spirit was going down, down, down. Because, you know, when you go on those crowded days, you have those people that have to walk five across so that no one could possibly pass them, or the people that are texting and walking, and those who have no clue that anyone else in the world exists but them. But the best thing I saw all day was the person who, they had their blinker on waiting for a parking spot very clearly, while another person literally in a huge big truck went up over the curb and shot into the parking spot before the lady in the blinker could ever even pull in. Well, the four of us that kind of watched this whole thing go down, we certainly had a good show of fireworks um, that, and I thought, well, there's the Christmas spirit right there. But on the other hand, this time of the year, we know there's toy drives, coat drives, food drives, and all kinds of things to help people who wouldn't have a good Christmas otherwise. But this year, we know that things are locally a little difficult with $35 a barrel oil. The stock market went down 300 points on Friday, and our economy in Oklahoma is the slowest growing in the nation now. And so I go to lots of meetings for, for charities, and giving to charities and churches and even toy drives they're all way down this year. Part of it is because, certainly, of the, the oil price tumble. But even across the nation, it's not just here. People are afraid of all kinds of things. But they're afraid to share for fear that somehow it's all going to come crashing down or we're not going to have enough to meet our own needs or wants. But the needs of charities and churches don't go down this time of the year, they actually go up in bad times. But then we have to learn of taking that leap of faith and leap of faith in God to share of what we have. And it's very hard. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's easy. The main reason is because we all have our own needs and we have to take care of our own families as well. But the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, that none of us ever, ever knows when we might not be that person who is in a position to ask someone for help. St. Paul tells the Philippians that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds and give us peace. Only that, only Jesus. It's true, but certainly when times are hard or maybe 
When someone we know is sick or we, we pray, we make our needs known to God or we're having a hard time and nothing seems to ans get answered or happen, we can feel like saying, okay, St. Paul, okay, Jesus, where's that peace that you're speaking about? I haven't found it yet. But there is one major way to help to feel that peace. And I'm not saying I'm completely there yet because it's, it's a tough call. But one of the best ways to feel that peace of Christ is to come out of ourselves and think of other people. Now, I can safely say in my 55 years here on earth, I have known many, many people who were happy seemingly all the time, some who were kind of sad seemingly all the time, and most of us are in the middle. We're happy sometimes and, and we're sad sometimes. And usually the thing that makes us happy is when things are going our way, everything's great, or we're having good times. But the thing that makes us sad is when things are not going our way, or maybe someone we know or love is, is hurting, or there's, there's problems, and then it can make us sad. But I can say without a doubt that the happiest people I have ever known are people that are generous, either of their time or their talent or their resources. I'll never forget it in all my life. When I was in seminary, I met this woman who uh, lived in Indiana, which was near where I went to seminary, and her name was Ruth. And Ruth was a very, very kind lady who would oftentimes come to the seminary for Mass and, and visit the students or come to Vespers and things like that. And I was told that she was a very generous benefactor to the seminary and to many charities. In fact, she was very generous to, to even many of us seminarians. Now, she didn't necessarily have the best of lives. Her husband had died relatively young. Her only child had died several years earlier. She had no family. And she was in failing health. She had cancer. But she always had a smile on her face, and she was always happy. Well, one day, and I, I and some other seminarians were invited over to her house for dinner. And I had in my mind certainly what it would be like, since this woman was a, a big, generous benefactor. I expected it to be a, a large, grand home with lots of fine things in it. But when we got there, it was not that. It was actually a very small, simple home. Inside was very, very simply furnished. And so I started thinking, ooh, dear, is this one of those cases that Jesus talks about where the church is taking money from widows or orphans who can't afford it? And that's a bad thing. So I started to get worried. But I asked her, basically, and she told me something that night that I will never forget. She said for years that she had fought depression and anxiety. And she had not been a very pleasant person to be around. But one day, all of a sudden, kind of out of the blue, she realized that she had lived her whole life wondering, what can someone do for me rather than what can I do for someone else? And then she started asking others, well, what did they need or what could she do for them? And she said her whole life changed. She told me that she finally had felt that peace that St. Paul and Jesus talks about. Now, she was not a wealthy woman by any way, shape, or form. But she said that when she changed her attitude, she never wanted for anything. Ruth died several years ago. But her funeral was so large that all of the people who wanted to come and pay tribute to her could not fit inside the Catholic Church in Columbus, Indiana. Well, we all try different kinds of ways to find happiness through money or power, popularity, prestige. And I know I've tried different ways and still do, but the true happiness comes from in here and comes from Christ. It comes from living a life of faith living a life of sharing who we are and what we have and trusting in the Lord enough to know that while sometimes prayers don't get answered right away or the way we want, when we make our requests known to God, they will eventually get answered in one way or another. It's like that little boy that gave Santa the huge list of Christmas wants. We're not all going to get everything in our list fulfilled or answered. But if we trust, then that peace that surpasses all understanding will be ours. And what a wonderful gift that will truly be. I had a priest once tell me one time, and I was very disappointed about something. He said, remember, Rick, not all rewards come in this life. You have to wait for the afterlife or until heaven. To which I said, well, I don't want to wait that long. Can't we get some rewards now? Well, we all probably feel that way sometime. 
But God does not have high-speed internet. The answers come on His time and in His way, not ours. But when we do completely trust in God, it will be worth the wait because it is so great that it is beyond all human understanding. This morning, uh, we have uh, a commissioning for our ministers of Holy Eucharist, either those who uh, received a letter that need to be recommissioned or those who are newly to be commissioned. And so if you um, would come forward and just stand along the front here, then we will have the prayer of blessing. Dear friends in Christ, these, our brothers and sisters, are to be entrusted with administering the Holy Eucharist, with taking communion to the sick, and with giving it as viaticum to the dying. In this ministry, you must be examples of Christian living in faith and conduct. You must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember that though many, we are one body because we share the one cup. As ministers of Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbor. For when he gave his body as food to his disciples, he said to them, This is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. And so are you resolved to undertake the office of giving the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to your brothers and sisters, and so serve to build up the church. Are you resolved to administer the Holy Eucharist with the utmost care and reverence? Dear friends in Christ, let us play, pray with blessing, with confidence to our Father. Let us ask him to bestow his blessings on our brothers and sisters chosen to be ministers of the sacred Eucharist. Merciful Father, creator and guide of your family, Bless our brothers and sisters. May they faithfully give the bread of life to your people. Strengthened by this sacrament, may they come at last to the banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And God bless you and thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord.
for the church, that we will experience joy through recognizing God with, e with us each day and be free to share that joy with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in public service, that they may fulfill their obligations faithfully and continually work for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the renewal of hope, that we may surrender our anxieties to God and trust in God's providence for all our needs and challenges. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the removal of obstacles from our minds and hearts, that we may be freed from greed, narrow-mindedness, and hardness of heart, and become open to God's gift of life, salvation, and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God's infinite mercy will be made manifest in the hearts of his faithful, leading us to perform many corporal and spiritual acts of mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithfully departed, especially Jerome Berend, Sue Appelder, and Robert Hamilton, that they may rejoice forever with the Blessed Mother. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold within our hearts. Continue to show us your love and your mercy. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, hearted in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abaot, Lenis Ugenius Terra Gloria Tua, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop and all those who, holding on to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion, with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Remember especially Kathleen Flores. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Just a reminder to all parents who have students who will be making their uh, first confession this year that there is a meeting uh, with us uh, right after Mass in the formal room. Today is also known as Giving Sunday, and we're collecting children's coats, gloves, and hats, children's books, and school supplies. Please leave your unwrapped donations under the Advent tree in the foyer. The limited edition uh, Greg Burns prints are rapidly uh, going away. Uh, they will be on sale at the welcome desk, and once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, the proceeds will go to our Christ the King School Scholarship Fund, and these would make great Christmas gifts. The original, if you haven't seen it, is hanging out in the narthex as you go down towards the foyer. Also at the welcome desk are the Catholic calendars. Our living nativity will be this afternoon at 5 p.m. here in church, followed by our Advent dinner in the atrium at 5.30. The next women's prayer breakfast will be this Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., uh, Teresa Brecky will entertain the ladies with Christmas music uh, while they socialize and enjoy holiday treats, and all women of the parish and their friends are invited. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults, and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.